Warzone 2 has just gone live and I'm here to bring you the best graphic settings to make sure your game looks visually stunning as possible whilst keeping your frame rate extremely high. So straight into the settings, looking at the display settings, we are going to be turning full screen exclusive on. This is going to give you as many frames as possible. However, if you do want a little bit more flexibility, like I record into OBS and things like this, so I have full screen borderless on, but this does reduce your frame rate down. Ultimately, as I record videos, it's just a hit I have to take. And then we're just going to skip over these next couple of settings settings but make sure dynamic resolution is off aspect ratio i have it on automatic because it just picks up my monitor but if it's not filling out to the edges pick the setting that works for you then you want to make sure vsync gameplay and menus is both off personally i have my refrain rate set to custom as my monitor is limited to 165 hertz as it's a 1440p monitor and the higher refresh rate monitors are insanely expensive so personally couldn't afford one of them but then i do have my menu custom frame rate down to 60 this is just to put a little bit less load on your graphics card will just extend out that lifespan a little bit more and then out of focus custom frame rate i have down to 30 because you're not seeing it anyway so it doesn't really matter um, if you are having a few issues in game with shaders and things like this, either hit restart shaders optimization or shaders optimization. This will hopefully sort those things out. And then on brightness, I have it up to 55 as typically speaking in Warzone, things have been a little bit darker than in the multiplayer game. So I do crank that up that little bit extra, but you don't want things over the top. Otherwise, you just won't be able to see anything. So 55 is that sweet point for me, but that is a little bit dependent on your monitor. So play around with that a little bit. You also want these next two settings off, constrained mouse to game window. You want that off and focus mode you want off as well personally i have high dynamic range as i don't have an ips monitor on this one and it just makes those colors pop a little bit better for me ultimately if your monitor stroke tv is not a hdr compatible screen then this wants to be off anyway automatic will just it will sense what's on there so moving over to the quality settings this is what i've got set here you always want this set to 100 people say you can change this down to sort of 99 and 95 or 90 or 80 and it yes whilst it will improve your frames if you look at the picture on the left hand side of the screen so this side here you can see the quality is terrible whereas if it's on 100 it actually just makes it look a lot better and then fidelity cas is the upscaling stroke sharpening i've got on as nvidia dlss has been pretty terrible and crashes quite a lot in game at the moment so until they fix that then you don't want that on then you want filmic sma a t2x on instead of the non-filmic version essentially if you've ever seen that sort of noise in fact i'll, I'll stick it on here and um, we can go here you can see that noise around his face just here you see where it's all sort of pixelated and stuff like that that's where filmic setting is off so if i go back and turn that back on you can now see all that sort of um, noise has disappeared. So just makes your game look a lot better. Then anti-aliasing quality, you want that down to normal. That's going to save you a lot of frames. And video memory scale, I've got this all the way whacked up to the top. This is probably something you want to do unless you're running multiple things in the background. Ultimately, this is to get you the best frames possible. So crank that all the way up to the top. And then moving over to the details and textures, I have this on low. I've got a 3060 Ti and this is going to give me as many frames as possible. So it's still a really high-end graphics card. But if you've got a 30, 80 Ti or a 3090 or a 40 series graphics card you could probably afford to have this up to normal maybe even high and still get some really great frames but as you can see down on the bottom right hand of the side of the screen right now look at the VRAM usage when you crank this up to medium then high it just absolutely tanks your frames by having this any higher than low but the game still looks great on low anyway and then over to texture filter anastropic we're going to have this on normal and nearby level of detail on high and distant level of detail high this is just going to give you that as it says level of detail at range and then over to cluster draw distance we're going to have that on short particle quality on high particle quality level on high and bullet impacts on sprays we're going to have this on shader quality down to low this does have quite an impact on your gpu that's what we want here and then onto tessellation you want this off again it's quite intensive in comparison to a lot of things so make sure that's off terrain memory we want on max and then on demand texture streaming we want this off this has caused a lot of frame issues in uh, modern warfare 2 and really has caused a lot of crashes as well so right now we want this completely off don't even bother touching this it was good on warzone 1 but it's causing a lot of frame rate issues in warzone 2 so have this off and then streaming quality we want this on normal volumetric quality we want this on low high is going to make it really hard to see when you're shooting with the suppressor on your gun as it's going to cause a lot of smoke to come out the barrels and you're not going to be able to see through it that well whereas low it's just going to limit that quite a bit deferred physics quality we want this off this is to do with the water whilst yes it does look great it's going to cost you a lot of frames so have this off and then water acoustics as well we want this off too again it's going to cause a 
lot of frame rate issues. And shadow map resolution, I have this on normal. A lot of people say very low, but to be honest, I quite like having just that little bit more crispness about the shadows, as otherwise they can be quite jagged. And you know, if someone's on the roof above me and I can see their shadow down on the floor, I can clearly see it's an outline of a player as opposed to just going, what is that? That's a really jagged shadow. It just gives you a little bit more awareness, to be honest. And then screen space shadows, we want this off, spot shadow quality off, spot cache low, particle lighting onto normal, and then ambient occlusion off this will cause you a lot of frame rate issues if you have it on um it's really going to tank it out just going to reduce your frames by so much by having it on yes this does make things look a little bit better but it's absolutely not worth the frames and then screen space reflections we want this off this is just how things look on reflective surfaces yes again it makes the game look great but it's going to cost you a lot of frames in doing so and then static reflection quality we want on low weather grid volumes we want off and then over to post processing effects we want nvidia low and then over to post-processing effects. And then NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, we want this on. However, some of you might find you get a little bit more responsiveness out of On Plus Boost. And then moving on to Depth of Field, we want this off. And then World Motion Blur off, Weapon Motion Blur off, Film Grain off off all the way to zero yes these things do look great visually but it is going to obscure so much of what you're able to see as you can see on the right hand side picture over here i mean how are you going to see enemies running across your screen when it's just all blurring across the place you want to be able to see it like you can here it's really crisp and clean so moving it over to the view settings personally i'm actually running 110 field of view i have previously run 120 but i've just been struggling to see things in this game in comparison to warzone 1 so i have 100 10, but if you are having it above 80 make sure it is on affected this is just going to make you have less visual recoil so you're going to seem like you actually have less recoil and it's going to be a lot easier to control and then weapon field of view this is really important this wasn't in warzone 1 make sure this is on wide basically it's going to make the gun take up less space on your screen and this is really useful because as you can see here, it's less obstructive and you're going to be able to see enemies that little bit clearer. So yeah, it's a great option. And then third person field of view all the way up to 90, vehicle field of view all the way up to wide, and then first person camera movement down to least at 50%. Same with third person camera movement and third person ADS transition. Uh, I've kept that as standard and then default spectator camera as game perspective. Then one last set of settings we're going to be running over is the interface as a brand new setting in game, um, which is color customization. What you want to be doing is chucking on color filter two. This is just going to make your game so much more vibrant. If you've been seeing the overlays that Nvidia has, this is basically the same thing, but in game. So it's not going to tank your frame rate like the Nvidia overlays do. Um, so this is really good. So filter two is the one to go for. And then color filter target, you want this on both. This is just going to make sure both your interface and your world just pops out that little bit more color and then world color intensity all the way to 100 and interface color intensity all the way to 100 as well add the hud color palette to tritianopia this is just to allow me to see a little bit clearer but i do make sure i have the enemy to something quite vibrant if you did want to copy my color settings for this if you use hashtag ff05ff it makes things quite nice and vibrant but that's all the graphic settings guys however if you did want to see the best audio settings for warzone 2 click on the video on screen now but if you want to see more known answers sense guys that cuts out all that faff that just gets straight to the point of the video then hit that like and subscribe button you're going to see all the best loadouts for warzone 2 coming right to this channel